A horse tries to board a train, Disney's cracking down on disability fraud, and is that a potato chip in your shoe or are you just happy to see me? Hey, I'm Greg Ott, and we've got all these weird and interesting news stories coming your way right now on your daily news refresh. So this is fresh video out of the country slash continent of Australia. We're here at this rail station in Sydney, an escaped racehorse enters the place and casually makes its way over to the train platform. While it doesn't appear that our mare there ponied up a train fare, it does seem to observe the yellow safety line. And fellow travelers move out of the way as the racehorse saunters along. After wandering about for a few minutes, our horse spreads back out towards the other end of the platform as a train pulls up and stands ready facing the boarding doors as the thing arrives. Hey, you know there appears to be plenty of open seating on board, which based on subways here in the states could be a good or a bad thing. But in spite of that, our intrepid horse here ultimately decides to hoof it, as it makes its way down the rainy boarding zone and heads for the exit. After abandoning the potential Pony Express, the horse is captured and safely returned to its owner, and soon gets placed in a trailer, only before, as observed by the state's transit agency, the horse was returned to his residence in a stable condition. In the transit agency's Instagram comments, Oi Tristan Close said, stable condition, ha. Sambari said, fair evaders these days, oh my lord. And Mr. Nobody with a bunch of underscores and zeros wrote, who let the dog's ex horse check out? Hoo hoo hoo. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. And after this all went down, the transit agency noted that no one involved in the incident is intending to take any further action as the individual was uh, only horsing around. Yep. Cover your face when you sneeze, don't take money out of a tip jar, and save your phone calls for until after the movie gets out. Those are the types of social faux pas you should try to avoid while living in polite society. Tiny ways that you can make the world more pleasant. Unlike that aroma that fills the office after you microwave what's left of last night's Branzino. Please don't do that. Now while these things should seem like obvious, non-controversial statements, here's one along those lines that just had to be clarified for people looking to go on vacation. Don't lie about having a disability to cut in line at Disney World. Yeah, so the Disney parks in Florida and California have something called the Disability Access Service. And it's a popular program that's been around for a while. The Washington Post reports Disability Access is Disney's most requested service in the parks. And its use has tripled in the past five years. Perhaps in part thanks to less than charitable advice like that professed in this now deleted 2022 TikTok video titled How You Rigged the System. Newsweek magazine website reported on this vid two years ago, which was captioned, on our way to get our IBS disability pass to cut all the Disney lines, posted by someone who appeared to be at one of the Disney parks. Now the issue here isn't that IBS could be considered a debilitating condition, it can. And in the replies of that now deleted TikTok, the poster claimed to have had disabilities and this video was just for jokes. But as someone called Jules Sumba recently pointed out in the Disneyland subreddit under the title TikTokers Abusing DAS, I'm so tired of content creators abusing the DAS system, with replies referencing TikTok streamers who coach people on what to say to get one of these passes. And the problem of bragging about faking disabilities to cut Disney lines is well known enough to spawn Tim Robinson TikToks. Now there's certainly no shortage of amateur Disney content creators, especially low quality Frozen impersonators like this one. <laughs> But on TikTok alone, there is a crazy amount of unofficial info floating around about how to qualify for this DAS service. And as Disney told the Washington Post, this service has always been meant for the people it just described in this new policy, but didn't previously describe using such specific language. Thus, in their own words on these updated websites, the disability access service is intended to accommodate a small percentage of guests who, due to a developmental disability like autism or similar, are unable to wait in a conventional line for an extended period of time. Now, 30 days ahead of a park visit over video, guests can carry out an eligibility screening with a cast member, aka an employee, to get registered for this service. Should someone be eligible, they can find an attraction and request a return time to that attraction that's equal to the standby wait time. So, if you want to check out a haunted mansion that inspired a 37% Rotten Tomatoes film, but there's an hour wait, 
A guest registered in DAS can request a return time that's comparable to that hour standby wait time and go elsewhere in the park to wait to return without standing in line. And again, this is just meant for someone with a developmental disability who can't wait in a conventional line. The park still has plenty of other accommodations for things like mobility and sensory disabilities. And as for someone with something like IBS, the Post reports there's also a new process that's yet to be fully detailed called Return to Queue for people who need frequent restroom access. These changes are rolling out in May at Disney World and in June at Disneyland, and they're all detailed on the internet, where you can see more about this process about obtaining disability access service. Oh, by the way, if it's determined that any of the statements you made in the process of obtaining a DAS are not true, you'll be permanently barred from entering the Walt Disney World Resort and the Disneyland Resort. And any previous park passes or services will be forfeited and not refunded. Which means if you really want to see a castle, you can just head to Europe instead. Which can be cheaper than a trip to Disney in the first place. For the first time, the flavor masterminds at Pringles are entering the world of footwear with the leader in innovative casual shoes, Crocs. You mean there's a better way? Bursting with flavor and style, Pringles and Crocs are bringing fans across the globe three limited edition Pringles-inspired designs. Pringles and Crocs classic clogs, each symbolizing a fan favorite Pringles flavor like original, cheddar cheese, sour cream and onion, and salt and vinegar. Pringles and Crocs classic slides, featuring a retro black and white Mr. P design and the Pringles and Crocs classic crush boot, which sport a first of its kind custom holster to store a grab and go Pringles can so fashionistas and snackers alike can carry their favorite crisps on their favorite shoes. The first US boot purchasers will receive the first ever Crocs inspired Pringles flavor, Pringles Crocktail Party, the limited edition watermelon chili lime flavor. Shoe lovers and snackers will have the chance to purchase the limited edition collection at crocs.shoes slash Pringles Crocs starting at $20 beginning Tuesday, April 16th at noon. Cash check or card?